Hello there and welcome to Upper 6 Further Maths. Here we're looking at an introduction to hyperbolic functions. We can answer questions from exercise 6a. So hyperbolic functions link into trigonometry. So just a reminder of traditional trigonometry. Uh, we have something called the unit circle, where x squared plus y squared equals 1. And if we were to draw that, that's a circle with radius 1. Um, it's a book standard circle. Now if we take any point on that circle, say up here, and give it an angle theta, and obviously the radius will be 1, then we can actually refer to the adjacent side, or the x-axis coordinate here, as cos theta, the adjacent side when you divide by the hypotenuse of 1. And the um, opposite side, the y component, um, when the hypotenuse is 1, is sine theta. So you can actually define this coordinate here as cos theta sine theta when you have a unit circle. What I mean by unit circle is a circle with radius 1. Now in hyperbolic trigonometry, uh, the equation is slightly different. It goes x squared minus y squared equals 1. So the graph that we get from this has asymptotes at y equals x and y equals minus x, and it looks a little bit like this. There'd be one on the other side as well, but for the benefit of this video, we're only really interested in the right-hand side here. And then there'll be a coordinates of 1 and 1 here, because if you think about it, the coordinate 1, 0, 1 squared minus 0 will equal 1. So 1 is the intersection point on this circle, on this um, what we call a hyperbola. This The um, name for this curve here is a hyperbola. That's why it's called hyperbolic trigonometry. It's a hyperbola. hyperbola. Um, it's a hyperbolic shape. And then a um, coordinate on this curve is called hyperbolic cosine and hyperbolic sine. Uh, but we generally put the h after the cos and the h after the sine. So we refer to this as cosh and cinch. Uh, or shine, I refer to it as, but sometimes people refer to it as cinch. But um, it's basically the hyperbolic version of trigonometry. It's where you have a hyperbola and then any point on that hyperbola can be similarly referred to as the hyperbolic cosine and the hyperbolic sine, shine or cosh. So cosh will represent the x-axis dimension and shine will represent the y-axis dimension. And the angle here, the angle of theta, uh, will be where we um, meet our cosh and shine function. But it's not really uh, an angle as such. It's actually more to do with the areas of these functions here. Let's have a look on the left-hand side here. This uh, diagram over here shows a sector that's been shaded in grey, where the angle is theta and the radius is 1. So if we were to work out the area enclosed by this curve and the line of um, theta equals theta, um, then that's a sector area. The formula for the area of a sector is half r squared theta. And given that the radius is 1 on a unit circle, the area here is a half theta. Now the link between traditional trigonometry and hyperbolic trigonometry is that the grey area over this right hand side as well is also a half theta. It's a bit more complicated to show it. You'd have to use some polar integration to show it. But this is also a half theta. So actually, this is not really an angle at all. It's just the point along the line which will give us an area of a half theta. So stop thinking about angles when it comes to hyperbolic trigonometry. Rather, it's more of a parameter that will give an area of one half theta. So in both diagrams, theta is measured um, is a measurement of how far along the curve you need to go to get an area of theta over 2. In the unit circle, this nicely corresponds to an angle measured in radians, but not in hyperbolic trigonometry. That's why we tend to use the unit measurement of radians, uh, because it perfectly gives us this half theta um, area here. So in hyperbolic trigonometry, it doesn't really refer to an angle because we'd be stuck in between a 0 to pi by 4. But actually, as we move this coordinate on along the hyperbola, actually the area enclosed here could actually tend to infinity. So it's not really to do with angles. It's more to do with an area of one half theta. 
So theta is not a measurement of an angle. Theta is more like a parameter, and when you study parametric curves in A-level maths, you'll understand a bit more about that. It's more of a parameter for cosh and shine, uh, such that when you integrate using polar coordinates, you get an area of theta over two. And so that we stop making this mistake about thinking that theta is an angle, we're actually going to use a different letter from now onwards. We're stop going to use, stop using t, theta, and we're going to start using the parameter of t. So it's t that we're going to use as our new parameter letter. We're, stop, we're going to stop thinking about it being an angle between 0 to 45 degrees. It's more like it's a, a parameter that, as the parameter increases, will take you further up the hyperbolic curve to make sure the area is equal to t over 2. And parametrically, this curve can be defined by x equals cosh t and y equals shine t. And if you wanted to draw this graph here, what you could do is just plot a bunch of t values, work out what x is, work out what y is, and then that will help you build up your curve. Notice here how cosh is always positive. The, um, on, the, on the graph here, the value of the x-axis is always greater than 1, greater than or equal to 1, but shine can be positive or negative. Um, now, if you take these two uh, parametric equations and substitute it into the original equation that made this curve, you'll get the identity cosh squared t, which is x squared, minus shine squared t, which is y, equals 1. So actually this is the key, um, the key identity for hyperbolic trigonometry. It's not, shine squared, it's not sine squared plus cos squared equals 1, it's cosh squared t minus shine squared t equals 1. So there's a slight difference between hyperbolic trigonometry and normal trigonometry. But it also still applies that tan, or hyperbolic tan, uh, tanch of t is equal to sine over shine over cosh. Okay, it's still, that formula there still applies, but this one here is the new one, uh, it's shine squared plus cosh squared uh, is not equal to 1. Okay, so an added bonus of hyperbolic functions is that they can also be defined using e to the power of x as well. It's also the case that cosh t is equal to e to the power of t plus e to the minus t over 2. And shine t is equal to e to the power of t minus e to the minus t all over 2. Uh, if you go into the description in this video, there'll be a YouTube link to someone else who shows that these two things are equivalent to each other. It does take a long time to do it, so I won't go through it in this video. I'll just tell you that this is a fact here, a fact you need to remember for A-level further maths, um, and we're going to be using it all the time. So make sure you remember it. Okay, so we'll move on to a question now where we have to prove that um, cosh squared t minus shine squared t equals 1 given these definitions of cosh and shine. So we're going to prove it using the exponential definitions. So we'll start on the left-hand side then. We'll start on the left-hand side of this thing down here. Cosh squared t minus shine squared t um, can be written in exponential form. So the exponential of cosh is this thing here. And the exponential of shine is this thing here. When we expand the brackets, the 2 is going to be squared on the bottom of both, so that's where the quarter appears. And then we're going to get this here on the left-hand expression and this here on the right-hand expression. When we expand out all the brackets, what you can see is a lot of the stuff will cancel out. This thing here will cancel out with this thing here. This thing here will cancel out with this thing here. And it'll actually be only the two halves that we have left. Um, that will set it equal to 1, and that equals the right-hand side. Okay, so another definition is that tanch t equals shine t over cosh t. So in terms of what is the tanch exponential definition, well, let's do the shine one divided by the cosh one, and we get e to the t minus e to the minus t. The twos will divide by, and then you times and flip the second one, so it'll be e to the t plus e to the minus t, and then if you times the top and the bottom here by e to the power of t, you'll get e to the 2t minus 1 over e to the 2t plus 1. And that's a bit of a friendlier definition 
of tanch t. So that's the one we'll generally use most of the time if we have to use a definition of tanch. Um, but you can also just remember that it's shine divided by cosh and then work it out if you ever need to. There's very similar definitions for hyperbolic sec, which is called sech, which will be 1 over cosh. And that will just be the cosh uh, exponential uh, definition upside down. Uh, Cosec is another one that will be 1 over shine t, and that will just be uh, 1 over hyperbolic sine or shine t. And there's a the last one which is hyperbolic cot, pronounced koth, uh, that's 1 over tanch t, so that would just be um, 1 over tanch t, or this fraction here flipped upside down. So definitions of all of the six hyperbolic functions uh, in exponential form there. So let's just have a go at a few little baby questions then. Find two decimal places the value of shine 3. So how would we work that out? We'd use the exponential definitions. We'd put 3 into the exponential definition of shine and then work it out on the calculator 10.02. Moving on to cosh of 1. So again exactly the same. Grab your exponential definition of cosh and plug uh, 1 in for t, so e to the 1 plus e to the minus 1 over 2, and we get 1.54. And then the last one, plugging in 0 0.8 into the tanch definition, so remember that was uh, e to the 2t minus 1 over e to the 2t plus 1, so that would be e to the 1.6 minus 1 over 1 1.6 plus 1, and that would give us an answer of 0 0.66. A little bit more of a difficult one, solve the equation, equation shine t equals 5. Well, the easiest way of doing this is to, again, grab that exponential definition. So use the definition, e to the t minus e to the minus t over 2 equals 5. Let's times both sides by 2 to get 10. Then we will multiply everything by e to the t. Let's see what happens when we do that. The first term will become e to the 2t e to the t times e to the minus t, the add the powers and you'll get e to the 0, that's 1, and then 10 e to the t on the right hand side. Move 10 e to the t on the other side, and now you've got what looks like a quadratic equation. So let's go ahead and solve that quadratic equation using the quadratic formula, and we're going to get b squared, so b plus or minus b plus or minus uh, b squared minus 4ac over 2a, and you get something that simplifies to e to the t equals 5 plus or minus the square root of 26. And then inverse the exponential. So you have to take a log at that point. Um, so it would be log of 5 plus uh, root um, 26. And you wouldn't do the negative one because then you'll end up with a ln of a negative number, which you can't do. So you just have to work out the positive one. So just learn the positive value and you get 2.31. So there we are. In both cases, we've had to use the shine or cosh or tanch exponential definition to work out the um, either value of the function or to solve an equation that equals a value for that function. Let's just have a look at what the cosh shine and tanch graphs will look like. So first of all, again, let's go to that definition, e to the x plus e to the minus x over 2. Remind ourselves of what the exponential graph looks like, and the e to the minus x graph as well. That looks like this one here. It's just a reflection in the y-axis. So when x equals 0, what will happen to this graph? Well, e to the 0 is 1. e to the minus 0, well, minus 0 is the same as 0, isn't it? So e to the 0 is 1 again. 1 plus 1 is 2. Divided by 2, we get cosh equals 1. Let's think about what will happen then as, so we'll plot our first coordinate at 1, 0, 1. Uh, as x gets very big, what will happen here? Well, the e to the very big number will get very, very, very big. e to the minus of a very, very big number will just tend towards zero, so it will just become nothing. It won't be more, it won't be relevant in calculating the answer to this. And then divide that by two, well, a really big number divided by two, still a really, really big number. Um, so cosh of x would tend towards infinity. What will happen then as x gets really, really small? Well, as x tends towards, as x is a really, really negative number, e to the x will just be a really negative number, which is basically zero. 
e to the minus of a really, really negative number. That will be a double negative there, and it will end up being positive, so it will be on the positive side here, or we can think of it as a really negative number on the e to the minus x graph will be very positive indeed. So something very positive divided by 2 is still something very positive and will tend towards infinity as well. And the Koch graph looks something like that. So when it's a very big negative number, it will still be um, very positive on the y-axis. And when x is a very big number, um, it's also going to be positive on the y-axis uh, as well. So there we are, that's the answer to the Koch graph. And actually, the Koch graph is a really interesting graph uh, because if you were just to hang a piece of string between two points, then this is the rough shape the graph would form. It looks like a quadratic, but it's a bit different to a quadratic. It's more like an exponential, two exponential graphs put together. Um, this is what the string would look like if it had uh, equal amounts of force going down at, at uh, every point. So it looks like an exponential graph on both sides. Moving on to the shine graph now. So again, we need to recall the exponential definition. So it's just a subtraction of two exponential graphs here. So again, let's just think about it. When x is 0, uh, we'll get shine of 0 is 0, because it'll be 1 minus 1 over 2. When x becomes a very big number, then e to the x will become very, very big. and e to the minus x will become just basically 0. So it would be something big, take away 0, divided by 2, that would be something big. When x tends towards minus infinity, then it will tend towards 0 for the e to the x graph. Um, it will tend towards something very positive on the e to the minus x graph. But it, because it's got a negative sign in front of it, that will make it something very negative. Very negative divided by 2 is something very negative or tending towards um, infin minus infinity. And then remember, we've got the rough shape of some um, rough shape of some exponential graphs here. So it's going to look roughly like that. An exponential on this side and an exponential on this side. So, so far, we've roughly seen a quadratic, just moved up one, and a roughly a cubic graph. There's no asymptotes here. This will just carry on to infinity on the right-hand side, carry down towards infinity on the left-hand side. More like a cubic graph than a tan graph. But the tanj graph, the tanj graph, we need to know um, what e to the x looks like because it's going to be e to the 2x minus 1 over e to the 2x plus 1. So let's think about it. As x is equal to 0, that's going to be minus 1. So 1 minus 1 is 0 on the top. doesn't matter what's on the bottom. It's going to be 0. So it's going to be 0 at 0. When x tends towards infinity then e to the 2x will tend towards, well, it will tend towards infinity quite fast. Uh, minus 1, that will still tend towards infinity. Divided by um, e to the 2x, again, that's going to be tending towards infinity, but plus 1. So every time x carries on and gets bigger and bigger, the numerator is just going to be too smaller than the denominator, a very, very small margin when you consider the very big numbers that are going to be in play um, on the top and on the bottom. So what will happen there is the fraction will just continuously be ever so slightly less than 1 if you've got a numerator that's too smaller than the denominator but getting very, very big. So the tanj graph will tend towards 1 and we'll see eventually an asymptote at 1 on the y-axis. As x tends towards minus infinity, then it will tend towards 0 on both of these graphs here but it will be um, minus 1 on the top, 1 on the bottom, so it would tend towards minus 1 um, when it tends towards minus infinity, but still just a slightly bit smaller, so just a, yeah, so a slightly bit smaller on the top than it is on the bottom. So we've got some asymptotes, and the graph will roughly look like that shape there. So you need to know all three shapes, but you could work them out just from the exponential definitions. Think about what happens when it's zero. Think about what happens when uh, x gets very big, what happens when x gets very small, and think about what happens to the exponential graphs as those three things happen. Okay, so it's your turn to have a go at some questions now then. So pause the video and give these two questions a go.
Okay, so shine of ln 2, let's grab the exponential definition. It's going to be e to the ln 2 minus e to the minus ln 2 over 2. Let's simplify what we've got here. e to the ln 2 is 2 minus, now we can't simplify this yet. We have to include that um, negative symbol into the ln first. It will go in as a power, and when you do it to the power of minus 1, it creates a fraction. Then we can do 2 minus a half over 2. 2 minus a half is 3 over 2 divided by 2. So the answer here will be 3 quarters. And question 4a, find two decimal places the value for x for which cosh x equals 2. Well, let's set the exponential definition e to the x plus e to the minus x over 2 equals 2. Uh, the next thing to do will be to multiply both sides by 2 and then multiply both sides by e to the x. So I'll do that in one step. e to the 2x plus 1 equals 4e to the x. Let's group everything on the same side. e to the 2x minus 4e to the x plus 1 equals 0. Let's now solve it like it is a quadratic. So it'll be e to the x equals minus b, which is 4, plus or minus the square root of 4 squared, which is 16, minus 4 times a times c, divided by 2a, which would just be 2. Let's just simplify what we've got here. 4 divided by 2 is 2, so it'd be 2 plus or minus. Uh, it'll be 16 minus 4, which is 12. 12 will be 2 root 3. So it's just going to be root 3 once you've factored, once you've cancelled out the 2. So it'll be 2 plus or minus root 3. Uh, the next thing to do will be to get rid of the exponential. So it'll be x equals ln 2 plus or minus root 3. Now, if you remember the cosh graph, we've got some more bits to do here. Um, we've got, uh, yeah, no, this is the answer. This is absolutely fine because we should have two answers. One that is a, a negative number, one that is a positive number. If you were to work both of these out, you should get one positive, one negative. So if you do ln 2 plus root 3, uh, you're going to get 1.32. And if you do 2 minus root 3, you're going to get the same, but the negative version. Try it out on the calculator. Uh, that's exactly what happens there. So you'll get two answers for this. So to equal 2 on the y-axis, we get two answers. One is minus 1.32. One is 1.32. And there we are. That's the answer to these two questions then. So... Have a go at some questions from page 122, exercise 6a. Make sure you're good at the basics because it's going to get very difficult from now on. So it's good to get some um, core basic knowledge in there. All right, then, lovely. Thanks very much for watching. Hopefully you found this video helpful.